This video is sponsored by Taskade, a real-time organization and collaboration platform. Make sure to check the description for a discount on your subscription. Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and in this video, let's take a look at the roadmap to learn Svelte in 2022. This video is intended to serve as a guideline for anyone who is planning to start learning Svelte in the year 2022. Before we begin, let me tell you, you need to be familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before starting with Svelte. If you haven't already, do make sure to check the other two learning path videos. All right, let's get started. Now, if you're unaware, Svelte is a component framework you can use to build high performance web applications. Learning Svelte can be split into three sections. The first section is the fundamentals section. This section is for you if you are a complete beginner. You need to start by learning how to create a new Svelte project using dgit. dgit is a project scaffolding tool with which you can instantly create a Svelte project by running one command in the terminal. Once you have a new project, you start with the technical concepts. The first one is about single file components. They are files with .svelte as the extension and encompass the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into a single file representing a portion of the user interface. Once you get familiar with the .svelte files, you'll need to focus on binding. You'll begin by understanding how to bind data from the JavaScript block to the HTML block. You learn about binding text, HTML, and attributes. This knowledge will help you move on to conditional rendering, how to show or hide elements based on a value using the if, else, and else if blocks. Next, you learn about rendering a list of elements using the each block and about the key identifier when rendering a list. Next, you learn how to handle events such as click of a button. Event handling will lead you on to form handling where you learn how to manage the state of your form and submit the data on click of a button. The last topic under the fundamentals section is about reactivity in Svelte. You need to learn about reactive declarations and reactive statements. With the knowledge of these fundamental topics, you should be able to create small Svelte applications. However, for larger applications, you need to be aware of the more advanced concepts. We're going to begin by understanding about the component architecture in Svelte. When you have multiple components in an application, the components need to interact with each other. You learn about props, which is data sent from the parent down to a child component, and also about component events, which enables a child component to send some data to the parent component. You'll then learn about the context API, which avoids prop drilling when data has to be sent down several levels deep in the component tree, and about event forwarding when you have to pass events higher up in the component tree. The next topic you would encounter is slots. Slots allow a parent component to control the content that is rendered inside a child component. It helps when creating layouts. When it comes to component styles, you'll need to learn how to apply component specific styles and how to apply global styles. Next, you'll learn about the component lifecycle hooks. You'll understand the different phases of a component and how to hook into those phases using the lifecycle hooks. It is in these hooks that you will execute code most of the time. For example, making an API GET request. It is also in these hooks that sometimes you will execute code. For example, making an API GET request. So as your next step, 
Learn how to work with the different HTTP requests in your application. Next, you're going to come across a variety of built-in elements which Svelte provides. There are about eight elements, each serving a different purpose. You have self for component recursion, component for dynamically rendering components, and elements for document head, body, the window object, etc. After that, you're going to learn about the module context, which allows you to share code between components. Next, you have the all important topic of stores in Svelte. When building applications, not all application state belongs inside your application's component hierarchy. Sometimes you'll have values that need to be accessed by multiple unrelated components. For that, you make use of stores. You have writable stores, readable stores, derived stores, and you can also learn to build custom stores which are really powerful. Finally, you can wrap up the advanced section by learning about Svelte's support for motion, transitions, and animations. Now for the third and last section, we have the Svelte ecosystem. Compared to some of the other frameworks or libraries, Svelte has a relatively smaller ecosystem. Also, some of the features like state management animations are all built into Svelte. So you may have to reach out to libraries for a few use cases like routing, in which case you have Svelte routing, Svelte material UI if you need a UI component library, Svelte forms lib for managing forms, Svelte testing library for unit testing, Svelte i18n for internationalization, and TypeScript for good developer experience. Finally, you can explore the more recent Svelte kit, which is the fastest way to build Svelte apps and supports many features like routing, server-side rendering, APIs, and a lot more out of the box. Highly recommend you give it a try. So this is my take on the Svelte roadmap for 2022. Thank you for watching. And if you found the video helpful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.